Hey, and welcome back to Let's Stamp with Phyllis. Today, I want to share with you a card that we made in our stamp club in June. And again, I was playing with a set called The Perfect Blend and this little coffee cup. I do not drink coffee, but this little coffee cup and I, we have bonded. We love each other. Um, it, anyway, it was just so much fun. So I decided, and I think my step club members knew that when they came to class, they were definitely gonna do something with the perfect blend. So this is the card that we made, and I'm gonna show you how to do this, and I'm also gonna show you something that um, I accidentally worked out to do these little circles. So let's go ahead and get started. The other set that I am gonna use is called Yippee Skippy, Never Underestimate the Power of Two. I'm a Diet Pepsi drinker, and I always have one handy, Diet Pepsi, see, Diet Pepsi, ta -da. that would be me. And I know that one is better than two. I mean, two is better than one, duh. So I'm going to use this when I stamped my images. There are two images in with the perfect blend. Um, coffee and friends are the perfect blend, which is so true. And given enough co coffee, I could rule the world temporarily. I heard somebody tell me that they were going to just take off temporarily. They were going to cut that off of the image because they could just rule the world if they had two cups of coffee or even one. So, okay, now we can get started. To go ahead and make my coffee cups, I'm going to be stamping this image quite a few times. And, sorry, I have to grab the right color. The first place I'm going to stamp it is on some scratch, well not really scratch paper, but designer series paper. And if you're watching this in July of 2013, Stampin' Up! just has a special. They just announced it today because when I'm recording this, it is July 1st, that you can buy three packs of designer series paper and get one free. Designer series paper is $10.95, so um, that's an awesome savings and it's a great time to stock up the designer series paper. You see it in the catalog, but once you get it in your hot little hands, it looks so gorgeous. The pictures just just don't do it justice. So what I'm going to do is with my early espresso, I'm going to stamp my coffee cup. And I'm just going to go ahead and tap my stamp pad onto the image. And I'm going to stamp it once firmly. And you don't, want to, you don't want to ever rock your stamps when you're stamping. You just want to go ahead and stamp and press it firmly. You can even hold it for 30 seconds if you want, um, and that way you'll get a just really great image. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. Then I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper. This is very vanilla. And now I just want to stamp the top of my coffee cup. So let me just ink that. And I'll stamp that. And all I need is the top. Can you see where I'm going with this? Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Now I'm gonna take my piece of crumb cake, and this time I'm gonna take that handle, you know, that you put around the coffee cup so you don't burn your hand, and I'm just gonna stamp that, and I'm gonna stamp that twice, because we have two. Okay, oh, look, can't have that. So let me just wipe that off a little bit, and that's because I'm too heavy-handed, and I'm not doing it like this. Okay, so let me just do it again. Okay, perfect. So, now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I want to get that out of there. So, let me find my scissors and just cut that out. And I want the gingham pattern on here, on my little pieces that go around the coffee cup. So I'm gonna take my gingham wheel. I've done a video on that that shows you how when you're rolling your images to not have that little gap in your image. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it onto my, and when I roll it, I don't go back and forth like this. I go all the way down and come up and all the way down. That gets your ink all the way around. Then this little part right here, I want it right in the top because when I roll, it's going to start here and go around. So I'm going to roll it there. And then let me just re-ink it just to make sure. And I'm going to go ahead, there's my little break, and roll it right there. Okay, now we're good to go. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this out. Now, I'm not masking, I'm just gonna, it's called paper piecing. 
And so here, and there's not one single line in this set. It's kind of like a sketchy set. And so there's multiple lines. So cut it in the middle or around the line. Uh, again, because you're putting it on top of an image that has these same lines, they will all blend out and <laughs> blend out. Perfect blend. Get it? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. And so they will just look absolutely adorable. Okay, so. And it's really easy, matter of fact, to cut this image. It was much easier than I thought when I sat down with my play date with myself and my stamps. Now here, we're just going to cut the lids out. And again, it's, it's just so easy. You don't have to really concentrate. And a lot of times when I'm cutting out images, I cut and I leave a border, but because when I do paper piece, paper piecing, easy for you to say, huh? I do not leave a border. So, and when you're recording videos, you always want to, you try to, I don't know, you just try to cut really fast because I know you're at home watching me and I don't want you to sit there and go to sleep. So, I try to cut fast, but some people really want to know exactly how to cut. Uh, one of the things that makes cutting easier is when you have paper snips. I don't know if you own paper snips. My girls, I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 12 years and one of the things I can tell you, back in the day, back in the day, I never cut. We never cut out an image because I just didn't like it. I had a hard time cutting it out. We weren't happy, I fussed a lot, and paper snips came out, and then they're like, really Phyllis, you're gonna make us cut again? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? So, now you can see, without me telling you what I'm doing, I'm cutting out my coffee cups, and when you get a bunch of these cut out and they're laying on your stamping table, you just wanna play with them, it's kinda like paper dolls. So, and again, I'm just cutting on the line. And we have one more to cut out. Isn't it fun? Now that, you know, you could use a little interlude for my cats. They're all taking their naps because I came home from work and they were excited to see me. And I said, okay guys, I gotta go do some videos. And they just looked at me like, really? You're gonna leave us? And yes. I have quite a few cats and uh, they just always make my life interesting. Okay, there. So now we have our cup. Let's go ahead and put it together. And it's pretty. It really is. It's really pretty just like this. Um, but anyway, uh, let me put, I guess it doesn't matter. You can put your your glue on your paper and you know as I do this it's probably easier to put it on your paper okay oh look at that that is so darn cute okay let me try it here because that way I won't get my glue on my hands when I lift it up I do like to use the Tombow because when you put it on you know how you can kind of move it around to make sure it's exactly where you want it and the Tombow will let you do that so now we want to Whoops, that was not me. That was uh, Darcy knocking something off the shelf. Goodness knows what it was. So now I'm just gonna put that right there. <laughs> Look, I just wanna drink coffee. Okay. Oh, yes. And look, I haven't had a sip of Diet Pepsi since I started my video. Well, I'm going through Diet Pepsi withdrawals. Okay, so now we have our cup, our two cups. Now, you tell me those doggone things aren't cute. See? And, oh, they are too cute. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get the rest of the card done. On this band, I'm going to stamp uh, my Never Underestimate the Power of Two. Oh, let me just throw that to the side. And I'm going to stamp that with Basic Gray. And I'm just going to stamp it on the left side. Yeah, you know, I held my breath to make sure it was straight. So I'm gonna put that over there. 
Now I'm going to do this and when I was putting the card together and I was originally thinking of it I did I thought oh wouldn't it be look look really cool if I could do like coffee stains? Well I don't have a stamp like that and I was looking around my stamp room and you'll never believe what I came up with. Let me this is my card, my card stock. Okay, I'm going to fold it in half. I've scored it at five and a half. And I found this bottle. I know, it's kind of silly. This is a dressing bottle from Walmart. Their, their own brand market side. They have some really good dressings uh, in their salad department. And they come with these nice black lids. And I tell my husband not to throw them away because they would make the greatest gift giving um, thing. So I'm hoarding them. And what I decided to do, and I didn't know if it would work, and this is Darcy. Let me get her out of the way. I took my basic gray and I just took the bottle and tabbed it and put it down. And then I just kind of rolled it and look at that. Put it down and kind of smear it to give it a little blur. If you don't want the blur, you don't have to move it. Now, is that cool or what? I was just, I was having a ball. And I was just so proud of myself because, you know, we have these aha moments and, you know, nobody's here when we have these aha moments sometimes. So now I have my background. I tell you, I just love it. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to put this decorative, um, there's a decorative ridge right here and right here. So I'm going to do that with my Simply Sport scoring tool. Okay, and when I put my cardstock down, I want my, my coffee stains to go down to the bottom. Then I'm going to score it at one, one and one eighth, and one and a quarter. Then I'm going to go to three, three and one eighth, and three and a quarter. Okay, so now I have those ridges that stick up. And this piece here is one and Huh, yes, one and five eighths by four and a quarter, and it's going to fit perfectly right in here. So let me go ahead and just put some Tombow on here and put this on. Okay, and usually when I cut these pieces, I like to have a little overhang so I can go ahead and trim it down. So I make sure I'd rather have it just a smidgen too long than a smidgen too short. Okay, so now I have that. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my coffee cups. So on my first one, and I'm looking for my, oh, my paper piercer because I can't function without my paper piercer. I'm going to take my one coffee cup. And again, this is what I do with my paper piercer. I just use everything. It picks up just everything. Okay. And you can use as many dimensionals as you want because they're really inexpensive. You get three sheets for $3.95. And I am a dimensional hound. Okay, and so I'm just going to go ahead and tilt my cup like this. Now, when I put this one on, see how that's going to layer on top? And I don't want to put a dimensional here, but I want dimensionals around here. Okay, so. I'm going to put my dimensionals right around here. Whoops, got an extra one. And take that backing off. Come on. And what I will do is just take a little bit of Tombow, just a little bit, so that kind of secures on there. And I'm going to layer those just like that. And there's my card. Now, I'm telling you, it's addicting. The paper that I used is from the This and That Epic Day. And let me just show you a couple of different um, variations. This was another pa uh, piece that has kind of like a, a map theme to it. This is another piece. And I, you know what? I want to say it's Calypso Coral. Um, but I don't have that little sheet. Oh wait, here it is. It is Calypso Coral. And there's a bunch of fun pieces in here. I have 
this um, hexagon. This is the one I used with that rustic back. You have this, and I, I really like this because it kind of has some coffee stains on it, but I only had two, so it didn't help me. That is the one I used for that coffee cup. Um, I've got this one and the zigzags. Somebody did zigzags in class and it looked really cool. This is a yellow, which I would look really great, and then polka dots. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed my tip, and really it's uh, jar stamping with the perfect blend. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at letstamp at cox.net, uh, and visit my website at www.letstamp.com. And again, I think I've given you the measurements, but let me just do it one more time because I know it's frustrating to have to figure them out yourself. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. It is scored at one inch, one and one eighth, one and a quarter, three, three and one eighths, and three and a quarter, and five and a half. This sheet is one and five eighths by four and a quarter. And these are just scraps that you can use. It's also a good way to use up your scraps. Um, again, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.